This is a Fox News Alert. I'm Brett Baer. The Obama foreign policy under fire. While President Obama fights off challenges from within his own party to have his decisions to his decisions in one dangerous part of the world, he's moving military personnel potentially into harm's way in another. The U.S. military tonight is acknowledging boots on the ground in Somalia for the first time since the Black Hawk Down disaster in 1993. The U.S. African Command announced what it calls a military coordination cell. Fox News is told there are fewer than five people so far. Their advisors, not combat troops, but they are on the ground in Somalia. This says fighting has taken an ugly turn in Syria, not with U.S. troops. Gains made by U.S. forces, though, in Iraq are disappearing to al-Qaeda-linked fighters. The relationship with Afghanistan's shaky government is at a low point now, and the political version of a family feud is brewing between President Obama and some of his fellow Democrats over new sanctions on Iran. A majority of the Democratic-controlled Senate wants them. The president, who hopes to continue talking with Iran about its nuclear program, does not and has threatened a veto. Chief White House correspondent Ed Henry on the political battle about a real-life possible war. As Iran's supreme leader again described the United States as Satan, Democrats led by Senate Foreign Relations Chairman Bob Menendez are gaining new steam in their effort to pressure President Obama to accept tough new sanctions against Iran, which led a White House official to take the unusual step of going on the record in the Huffington Post to charge some fellow Democrats want war with Tehran. Can you say from the podium that, you, that Democrat Bob Menendez wants to go to war? Look, I think that uh, Senator Menendez, Chairman Menendez, wants what we want, which is to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. He and many others in the Senate have been uh, excellent partners. That's not what the White House said to Huffington Post, an official declaring, quote, if certain members of Congress want the United States to take military action, they should be up front with the American public and say so. The administration is on defense because there are now 59 senators, including 16 Democrats, who have defied the president to support a bill to ready new sanctions if diplomatic talks fail. While the president believes the bill could blow up the talks, Menendez insisted again today he wants diplomacy to succeed, but the U.S. needs a plan B. Writing in the Washington Post, quote, the American public doesn't trust the Iranian regime, neither do I. Let us concentrate our efforts on achieving shared goals, a diplomatic resolution to Iran's pursuit of nuclear weapons, coupled with a diplomatic insurance policy should negotiations fail. The president may also need a plan B in Afghanistan. It's unlikely President Hamid Karzai will sign a long-term security agreement. And after it was revealed that former U.S. Defense Secretary Robert Gates's book claims Mr. Obama, quote, can't stand Karzai, the Afghan president has now authorized the release of 72 Taliban fighters from Bagram prison. We are in touch uh, through our embassy in Kabul uh, and others uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, on this matter. Republicans have hit the president for not having substantive talks with Karzai since last summer. I do think it's concerning that the president has not engaged personally more often on an issue of such magnitude. As for the last time the president spoke to General Joseph Dunford, the U.S. commander on the ground. I know we don't really out every conversation the president has with his military leaders. And I think I've answered the question. Thank you. Now, pressure is building on the president because uh, supporters of new sanctions against Iran are getting close to a veto-proof majority, in part because it's hard for the president to accuse lawmakers of wanting war when he himself is keeping the military option on the table. Brett? More on this with the panel. Ed Henry, live on the North Lawn. Ed, thank you. Fierce clashes are being reported between Iraqi special forces and al-Qaeda-linked militants who have taken control of parts of Fallujah and Ramadi inside Iraq. It's the worst violence since U.S. troops left Iraq. Now congressional lawmakers are calling on President Obama to make a move. Here's Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge. Conditions on the ground in Anbar province are deteriorating, with al-Qaeda-affiliated forces consolidating gains in Fallujah and Ramadi, with a push east to Baghdad, where a suicide bomber attacked an army recruitment center Thursday, killing 23. A new analysis from the West Point Counterterrorism Center describes how the group's dramatic expansion into Syria under the banner of al-Qaeda in Iraq and the Levant has, quote, offered a tremendous platform to recruit, train and fundraise in ways that position the group to both stoke and exploit sectarian tensions in Iraq. Pressed on the chaos, the State Department defended its strategy. 
to argue that we are not actively engaged in diplomatic efforts around the world is uh, completely inaccurate. Thursday, the Speaker of the House called out the President for failing to reach a status of forces agreement with the Iraqi government and his commander-in-chief handing off the work to others. The administration has chosen to spend much of its time and energy trying to explain why having terrorists holding key terrain in the Middle East is not the President's problem. Democrats don't dispute that hard-wung American gains in the 2007 surge are being lost, but accuse Republicans of ignoring the facts. Blaming the administration for failures and decisions by the Iraqi government ignores not only history, it also leads to policy approaches that would not be in our interest or in the interest of the Iraqi people. The State Department also designated Ansar al-Sharia in Tunisia, blamed for this attack on the U.S. Embassy in 2012, and Ansar al-Sharia in Libya, blamed for the Benghazi assault three days earlier as terrorist groups. The designation comes 15 months after Fox News first reported the al-Qaeda ties and the connection between both terrorist attacks. When questioned by a Fox producer about its own press release, the State Department spokeswoman tried to play down the designation's broader significance. You said that uh, Ansar al-Sharia Tunisia has ideological ties to al-Qaeda and ties to its affiliates. Is that an admission by the administration and the State Department that uh, terrorism is on the rise? I would, I would refute that. And a short time ago, the U.N. Security Council condemned the violence in Iraq. As one analyst noted that an all-out offensive by the Iraqi government to retake Anbar could mean higher civilian casualties and further drive the moderates to side with al-Qaeda. The crisis is now testing the Obama administration's remaining leverage in the region, Brad. Catherine, thank you. Rebel on rebel fighting reportedly has left nearly 500 people dead in the past week in northern Syria. Activists say battles continue between al-Qaeda-linked militants and factions of moderate and ultra-conservative Islamists. Now to the U.S. economy and another setback for the president today. Employers added the fewest jobs in three years in December, and huge numbers of people are just giving up finding work. Here's White House correspondent Wendell Gohler. The lowest unemployment rate of Barack Obama's presidency was attached to a disappointing job creation report. The 6.7% rate is the lowest since October 2008, but just 74,000 jobs were created in December, far below the 200,000 economists had predicted. The numbers intensified the fight over renewing long-term jobless benefits, which expired with the new year. There was a measure to extend benefits in the way that President Bush signed into law five times and Republicans won't go along with it. On the Hill, House Speaker John Boehner said, quote, instead of making it easier to find a good paying job, Washington has been more focused on making it less difficult to live without one. And Texas Republican Kevin Brady agrees. I just hope my colleagues on both sides of the aisle remember that the measure of Americans' compassion is not how long we provide unemployment benefits, but how soon we get people into good paying jobs. Democrats and Republicans are divided over whether to extend the benefits and how to pay for them. 1.3 million people lost long-term unemployment benefits when the new year began. A post-depression record number of Americans have been out of work for more than a year and wouldn't qualify for extended benefits anyway. It's the relatively small labor force participation rate that keeps the jobless rate from rising. More than 90 million people who don't work are not counted as part of the labor force, which is one reason Republicans say the focus should be on job creation. This latest report this morning reflect the lowest number of jobs added since January of 2011. That doesn't speak well about the track record of what's going on here. But despite the December hiccup in the long-term unemployed, administration officials feel the long-term job creation trend is good. December absolutely was below our expectations. November was revised up and was now 240,000, which was well above our expectations for that month. Meanwhile, AFL-CIO officials concede the fall in the jobless rate, quote, was driven mostly by people dropping out of the labor force, not by healthy job creation. But the deputy chief of staff went on to say it is more critical than ever for Congress to quit dawdling and pass an extension of unemployment insurance immediately. Late today, a spokesman said Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid is willing to consider what he called a limited number of Republican amendments to the extended uh, uninsurance benefits bill that had been considered the holdup, and it may break the impasse. Brett? 
Wendell Goler at the White House Briefing Room. Wendell, thank you. Let's go inside the numbers now, learn more about what they mean. Melissa Francis is in New York. She's the host of Money with Melissa Francis, weekdays at 5 p.m. on the Fox Business Network. Good evening, Melissa. You know, the question I get so much is why did the unemployment rate drop so much, but only 74,000 jobs were added? No, absolutely. I mean, those are two totally different surveys, first of all. And that 6.7% number looks really good until you realize that 350,000 people left the workforce. That's five times as many as found a job. And those that the support the president try to spin it and say, a lot of those people are retiring. They're baby boomers. But that's just a fraction of the number, Brett. Yeah, I mean, this is the lowest labor participation rate since 1978. So that's a tough thing to, to turn around for them to spin. Meanwhile, there's evidence that, that those finding work aren't really finding the solid high paying jobs in, in a recovery. No, that's true. You have to drill down on the stats within the numbers. And it says, you know, the average hours worked per week fell. That means there are more people taking part-time jobs. So they may have found a job, but it's not a full-time job. Uh, there were a lot of temporary workers that were added. And you saw wages very stagnant. So overall, if you have a job, you're still having a very hard time paying the bills. And quickly, you know, this comes as the president has vowed to fight what he calls income inequality. It's actually, yeah. once again this month, getting worse, it appears. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at this stats, once again, it got worse. You know, last year, the stock market was on fire. Up, the Dow was up 26% for the year. Its best year in 18 years ended at a record. That's great for wealthy people that are in the stock market. That was fueled by the Fed. At the same time, you are looking at working folks with stagnant wages, with part-time work, or with temporary work. They're standing still or falling behind while the wealthier are getting richer. It happened again this month that just went by. Okay, Melissa, as always, thank you. Thank you. Wall Street apparently not particularly bothered by the jobs numbers. The Dow was down 8. The S&P 500 gained 4. The Nasdaq was up 18 today. For the week, the Dow was down 2 tenths of a percentage point. The S&P 500 was up 6 tenths. The Nasdaq gained 1. Up next, someone has finally been fired over the Obamacare website rollout. We'll tell you who. And it's some breaking news, but first, here's what some of our Fox affiliates across the country are covering tonight. Fox 7 in Austin, Texas, says retail giant Target now says personal information was stolen from as many as 70 million of its customers during the holiday shopping season. Target originally said the breach affected only about 40 million credit and debit card users. Fox 13 in Salt Lake City with reaction to Attorney General Eric Holder's decision to recognize more than a thousand same-sex marriages performed in Utah before the Supreme Court put those unions on hold. And this is a live look at a dark and rainy Philadelphia from Fox 29. The big story there tonight is the search for a man who threw scalding hot coffee, take a look at this, on a worker at a donut shop Wednesday afternoon. The man tried to pay with an expired cell phone coupon. And then settling up in cash, he went back and did this. That's tonight's live look outside the Beltway from Special Report. We'll be right back.